Before we get to what she's going to do about it, let's start with Reeves's audit of the public spending. Was any of this surprising to you? Hi, good morning. Yeah, I would actually say it was a little bit surprising in the sense that the problem is a little bit bigger than we thought. Taxes are going to rise and we'll need to um, issue fresh borrowing. And uh, the reason why it was a little bit more surprising is that going into the audit, we had sort of written or we were sort of expected, expecting that a 20 billion fiscal hole would be found in public finances. But this number that we had quoted related to sort of the medium to long term uh, pressures on public spending due to the unfunded and protected departments. Now, we, what we found out yesterday was that actually for this budget alone, there's a 20 billion shortfall. Now, I think it's important to say two things. The first one is that it's not only due to sort of this 20 billion number is not only due to unfunded uh, spending commitments. Part of it does, half of it does generally seem to be um, that there are some departments that are struggling. They need sort of a cash injection right away, especially the home office and the transport department. But this, the another half of the 20 billion is also a political choice from Labour. It wanted to meet the pay demands of public sector workers, and that also is reflected in the 20 billion. And then just the second thing to note is that there's still a bit of uncertainty about this 20 billion, because the document that was published by the Treasury did say that uh, until the autumn statement, the government would try to find further savings within existing budgets to sort of make up for that hole. So we're, there's still a bit of uncertainty there, and it's possible that this is an upper estimate. Okay, that's really interesting. So you're kind of agreeing with the Conservative charge that this isn't just an economic exercise, but a political one. The other charge from the opposition is that tax rises now look likely, that she's kind of abandoning growth as a solution to the fiscal black hole in favour of austerity and tax hikes. What do you expect is coming? I think, I mean, tax hikes obviously drag on the economy. They will probably drag a little bit less if they are targeted to wealth, uh, to pensions and um, to businesses, some, some, some sort of business, the, the ones that they are considering. Um, they, can, they can drag a little bit less than the traditional tax hikes, for instance, on income. But at the same time, you'll also be going to have increased public spending. So actually, in the short term, there's not a big impact on the economy. But now I do think that there's a more fundamental question about which fiscal space this current government has to invest, because we didn't talk about that yesterday, or Reeves didn't talk about that yesterday, but public investment is also set to fall. And, you know, to sort of, in order to change the growth prospects of the economy, you kind of need to add more investment. And that's something that in the current fiscal rules, there's just no fiscal space to do that. So I think at some point we're going to have to have a conversation about whether the current fiscal rules are sort of the right ones if we want to stimulate growth. And indeed perhaps we'll have that on October the 30th, the date Reeves announced for the next budget. But I wonder apart from tax rises and spending cuts, what about the question of borrowing? Can we expect more of that in the near term and how do you reckon the BOE will think about that? I think, I think yes. Again, um, as I said earlier, I think the number we got yesterday is that there, there was going to be between 16 and 17 billion uh, of fresh borrowing uh, this year. It's possible that that number comes down until, until the autumn statement. Uh, I think for the BOE, the, I think there's two reasons why it wouldn't be too concerned about the news yesterday. The first one is that actually even these 16 billion in extra borrowing, they're unlikely to change much in the short term to the economy, so they will probably lift GDP by 0.3%, it's what we, uh, we're estimating, and inflation by just 0.1%. So it's it's not much for the BOE to be concerned. And fundamentally, what the BOE is sort of more concerned about is sort of the medium-term impacts on inflation. And there, we sort of hint, we heard from Rachel Reeves, and I think it's widely expected that she is going to try to make up for that extra borrowing with tax hikes. That's also what we're going to hear probably in the autumn statement. So that sort of corrective action means that the inflationary consequences won't be, um, won't be big.